Hi guys, and welcome to the Concrete Construction Channel. I'm Mike, and here is my little friend, Coco. So, today's video is not going to be about concrete or construction. What we're going to talk about is fraud and defrauding the public. So, I have a story I want to share about HSBC Bank. So, I have a couple of fraudulent stories to tell you. I'll tell you why HSBC was my main bank for many, many years, why I left them, and why they actually just, just defrauded my grandma who had an account with them. So we're going to get to all of that in this video. Please bear with me. I hope it doesn't bore you, but I just want to make you aware and Coco wants to get down. Not everybody wants to be a YouTube star. So let's discuss why HSBC was my bank. So HSBC was my bank from when I was a little kid. Uh, my mom opened an account there when I was a toddler. And I just grew up with them. They gave pretty fair interest on your money for your savings accounts. They gave us great options with CDs over the span of my life. And um, I, when I was opening businesses and... I needed credit cards and all sorts of credit lines and accounts. They took care of it all, and I was happy. But as time went on, and I'm going back to ooh, about 2012, they started to decline. They had terrible customer service. They gave you no, absolutely no rewards for anything you had. The interest rates plummeted. Uh, to have a CD, I think they were giving you 0.02%. It was some ridiculously low number where if you locked in the money, you got pennies. And, you know, I was never a multimillionaire. I'm not very, very rich. So it's not like I'm locking up millions of dollars. So I just started to become disgruntled with them. And then I mail in, I was mailing in my credit card payments, because I did not know you could go to the branch and pay them. I just never did it. One day, I get a call when I'm on a job from a guy who says he's from the credit card department at HSBC. And he said, they haven't received my payment, and it's two weeks overdue. I said, well, that's impossible. I mailed it out weeks ago. You should have gotten it, and the check should have cleared. Um, I said, when I go home, I'm going to make sure the check didn't clear. I went home. Lo and behold, the check did not clear. However, before we hung up the phone, he said, I just want you to know, I deal with deadbeat contractors like you all day. So this was my business credit card. I said, we really don't make any money off of you because you don't pay any interest. You make the percent, the convenience fee from every vendor that I go to. But that's, that was their response to me. So I wouldn't be surprised if they took my payment, ripped it up threw it away, said, wait two weeks, call this guy, deadbeat contractor, tell him he's a deadbeat, and collect interest from him. By the way, I didn't pay the interest either. Not necessarily on mine. So at that point, I was done with them. I was getting no rewards. Capital One was sending me advertisement after advertisement with their cash back. And I said, you know something? Their customer service is terrible in the... In the branch, all the people that I had known were leaving because they were disgruntled with the company. And I just said, you know what, it's time to move on. Not everything lasts forever. So I moved on to other banks. And I'm very, very happy with the banks that I'm with now. So that was my HSBC story from when I was there and when I left. So, And when I was closing my final account there, their, their response to me was good riddance. Now, I did pay my bill. I didn't mail them the check. It just, whatever happened in the post office happened. It just didn't get there. But their reaction was ridiculous because I'm 100% on all my payments. I've never missed a payment. I never pay less than the due amount that's on the paper because I don't want to pay the high interest fee. So for them to react the way that they did with a customer of my caliber was just insane. 
Uh, but they really don't give a rat's ass, so I guess it doesn't matter. So fast forward now. Um, I discussed this in a video that I did not post yet. Um, it's been in the cycle. It's just a little job lapse video about a restaurant we did a patio for. My grandmother has dementia and Alzheimer's, so I've been taking care of her since March 11th. She's been living with me since then. Uh, now she fell, she broke her arm, um, dislocated her shoulder to be 100% uh, accurate, and she's been in the hospital now for the last few days, and she will continue to be in the hospital for the foreseeable future. As she now has to go through rehab, she says she doesn't remember how to walk, so she has many unfortunate challenges ahead, as do I and my father. But that's neither here nor there. So my point is, is that she gave me power of attorney and medical proxy. So as power of attorney, I am now operating her account. So I'm paying her bills because she still accumulates bills. Um, so I've been paying the bills. Any bills she hasn't paid, I am getting up to date with everything. We were unaware that she still had a small savings account at HSBC. The only thing that was left in this account was $532.22. And I said, you know what? It, it snowed the last on Thursday. We had that snowstorm that paralyzed the city that was like four inches of snow. And Friday, we decided not to work. It was just too messy on the job sites. So Friday, I decided to go down to HSBC and be listed as power of attorney on the account so I can close it. I went in there knowing all the hoops I have to jump through to be able to take control of this account because I did it with Capital One. It was a whole freaking thing. And, um, excuse me, so I go into HSBC and I went to the teller in the front and I told her I would like to close this account. The girl turns to me, she looks very puzzled. She goes, this account has already been closed. There's no money in it. I said, well, I'm holding the most current statement, which would be, they send quarterly statements. So you're going to get a statement from June to September, October to December, right? So this is the most up-to-date statement that I could have at my at the current moment. So I said, well, there has to be money in the account because I'm the only person who could have closed this account and taken the money. No one else has power of attorney. No one else has medical proxy. Not that medical proxy matters in HSBC. I said, and my grandma hasn't been outside since March 11th. She hasn't, she doesn't go anywhere anymore. She can't. She calls over this young kid and my God, this kid is unfrickin' believable. He's got to be 22 years old, 23, a punk like you've never believed. And he looks at the computer screen and guys, it's all in the eyes. It's all in the eyes. He looks at the computer screen and he looks kind of surprised. Looks a little puzzled even. And he turns to me and goes, the account is closed, there's no money, what? And he shrugs out, what? I said, here's the statement. The girl has it. There's $532.22 in this account. He goes, yeah. He goes, no, it's do no, it doesn't. The account is closed, there's no paperwork to do. I said, well, okay. But I'm speaking in my normal tone of voice. He's getting... He's escalating this like ridiculously. Like the the way he's talking to me is just insane. I couldn't even believe the way he was talking to me. It was pretty crazy. And he goes, well, what was the next thing he said? Uh, so then he goes to me, uh, where have you been if you want this money? So where have I been? I said, I've been taking care of a 93-year-old since March 11th. I said, I've been doing that. I'm running a business. So his next statement to me was, well, there's nothing you could do for this account. I said, okay. The teller comes back and says, I don't know what the SFE is. She goes, the SFE computer shows that the money is there and the account is not closed. It's active. The money is there. And he's like, he goes, well, this guy has an attitude. She looks at me like, what? And the people behind me are in shock because I haven't raised my voice. I haven't said one nasty thing to this guy. This guy has just elevated it to a ridiculous level. He goes, 
you come in here and you're asking all these questions of me, like I'm going to answer you. How would you like it if someone came in here and asked me questions about your account without you being here? I said, well, hold on. I said, here's my power of attorney, the original copy. I said, I am the person who has been delegated to run her accounts. I said, so if someone came in with a power of attorney and said, I'm here to run this guy's account, and that obviously I consented to it, I said, then you should answer his questions. I said, I'm not here on just some women of prayer. I didn't rob the mailbox. And he never asked me for identification. I said, do you want my license? Do you want to see my name? He goes, oh, no, I don't want to see any of that. Okay. So she goes, you know, we have to rectify this. The money is in the account. Regardless of whether he's power of attorney on this account or not is irrelevant. We have to get this account funded. And he goes, well, nothing is going to be done until Monday when the operations manager comes here. He goes, so you could take your attitude and leave because there's nothing we can do for you today. I said, whoa. Huh. I said, you got to be kidding me. So I said, you know what? Not a problem. I'll see you on Monday. So the teller says the account is open, active, money is there. The tell the whatever whoever she called on the phone says the account is there and the money is there and it's active. And I have the statement. I mean, I have the proof. There is no they can't deny this. It's there. And the account is not dormant. I know that they sometimes do that, but the account is not dormant because we have received no letters that it would be dormant. We just received statements. And we have received nothing from HSBC to tell us that it was going into being dormant. And I don't believe it is. So I believe she was using the savings account until March 11th when she, you know, went off the banana boat. To me, this guy knows something. He probably thought she was dead and no one knew about this account. This is my belief. Let me start off with this is my belief. I have no proof other than his facial expression that was shocked. And I could see it in his eyes. And he escalated to being so nasty to me, almost like I was inconveniencing him with this. So I believe truthfully, he knows something. Or he took the money out of this account. And that's why the teller screen shows that it's closed and it's not on the main computer because he wouldn't have access to whoever she called. He obviously has no access to that computer, but he has access to this computer. Something smells very, very fishy. And the teller was not in on it because she's acting the way she's talking to me is how I would expect someone to talk to me in this situation. So, okay, if you want to say, well, he thought you were fraud, he thought you were going to rob, his first reaction would have been, well, who the hell are you? You have power of attorney? Like, what is your story? His first few questions to me wouldn't be, why am I there? And his first question to me wouldn't have been, the account is closed, there's no money in it, there's nothing to do with paperwork here. So, to me... I feel like he's hiding something and now they're going to take the weekend or they're going to hope that I don't come back on Monday. But this is today is Sunday. This happened on Friday. So you can bet your asses that I will be there tomorrow and I will be with their operations manager and they could jerk me around as much as they want. Manager isn't here. We can't do your power of attorney. I am going to stay on this until I get that $532.22. So guys, I hope this video has helped you out. I know it really wasn't that educational, but I just wanted to expose the frauds. Guys, please be safe, take care, and I will talk to you guys soon.